Welcome back. Today we're going to go ahead and discuss lesson 42 notes proving lines parallel. Using the converse theorems we learned on our pink sheets, let's answer the following questions. So, given the following information, determine which lines, if any, are parallel. State the postulate or theorem that justifies your answer. So, this is our direction. Okay. And then this is the picture that we're going to go ahead and use. Now, I want you to go ahead and stop the video if you have not seen the Lesson 40 Pink Sheet Properties, okay? It's different from the, uh, the three, uh, Unit 3 Pink Sheet Properties, so you really, really need to watch that video if you have no idea, because the context is very, very important if we're going to go ahead and do the notes. So, stop the video, watch that, and then come back, okay? Alright, let's go ahead and take a look at 1A. Angle 1 is congruent to angle 6, okay? So we can assume that angle 1 is congruent to angle 6 because it says right here. So angle 1 is here, and angle 6 is here. And these lines, we they are just for now ordinary lines cut by a transversal. We cannot assume that these lines are parallel at all because it's not stated or there's no... We don't have those arrows to indicate that they are parallel or those little feathers there. We cannot assume that these lines are parallel. That is what we are trying to um, determine. And we're going to use those converse theorems to help us figure out which lines are parallel. Okay? So I have angle 1, which again is over here. And then I have angle 6, which again is over here. Notice that with angle 1... Part of this, uh, part of this angle is involved, or is, is is coming from that lined L right there, and then if we look at this line, that helps create angle six, right? So what can I say about line L and line N? Well, line N or line L and line N are parallel by well we, we we don't know why right and that's why we have to use those converse theorems to determine why they are parallel but i know for sure they are parallel because look angle one and angle six are congruent and because they are on the outside yes they are exterior angles and they are on the opposite side of the transversal so we can say that line l and line n are parallel because of the alternate exterior angles converse, okay? Line L and line N are parallel by the alternate exterior angles converse, okay? All right, so that's 1A. Let's go ahead and take a look at 1B. So... Angle 2 is congruent to angle 3. So here's 2, and then here's 3. And we can assume that they are congruent. Now, which lines are parallel? Well, we can see that line L helps us create angle 2, and line M helps us create angle 3. And if I were to look at or compare these two angles here, well, we can see that they are on the inside of these lines and they are on the opposite side of the transversal so we can say that line l is parallel to line m by the alternate right and then they are on the inside so that's alternate interior angles converse okay so that's 1B. Now let's go ahead and take a look at 1C. Um, angle 3 is congruent to angle 5. Here's angle 3, and then here's angle 5. And um, so angle 3 is part of line M, and angle 5 is part of line N. So we can, see, we can say that 3 and 5 are congruent because it says right here. But why? Why? Why, why, why? Well, we can see that I have my line. So these lines are cut by my transversal right here. If I compare this region here to this region here, 
And um, let's go ahead and take a look at one of our theorems that we know. And that's basically the corresponding angle theorem, right? Because, you know, they are on the same region. If I were to stand at, you know, this corner here in one region, then I should be standing at the same corner at another region. So angle three and angle five are definitely congruent. So we can say that line M is parallel to line N by the corresponding angles converse. Okay. 1D, angle four and angle five are supplementary. Okay, cool. So we can we can assume that angle four and angle five are supplementary. So I'm gonna go ahead and erase this right now. Here's angle four, here's angle five. They are supplementary. And notice that I have these lines here, and they are and these angles here are on the inside. So just by looking at this, they are on so these angles here are on the same side of the um, transversal, and they are also on the inside. So notice that angle four is part of the, uh, line M and angle five is part of line N. So we can say that line M and line N are parallel by the same side, interior angles converse. Okay, and remember, I just want to make sure that you understand the converse theorems helps us, the converse theorems help us prove lines parallel. Okay, so that's basically the gist of this lesson. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at this uh, question here. Find x so that a is parallel to b. Um, so here's a, so a is right here, and then b is right here. So these are lines. We are not going to assume that they are parallel, but if we can show that these angles here are congruent, then that means that these lines are parallel. So these lines here are just ordinary lines cut by a transversal. And we can assume that these angles here, they kind of look like alternate interior angles to us, yes? Because these angles are opposite side of the transversal and they are also on the inside so what i can do here is i can set these two angles equal to each other these expressions equal to each other and then i'm going to go ahead and do my algebra so i'm going to subtract both sides by 5x and then i'm going to go ahead and add both sides by 21 so that's just going to give me 28 on the left hand side and then i'm going to get 2x on the right hand side now i'm going to use the um division property of equality that means i got to divide both sides by two so that's going to be 14 is equal to x right so with that i have the value of x and this is not a necessary step but if the if i plug them in if i evaluate i'm like okay five times 14 plus seven is that going to equal to seven Sep 7 times 14 minus 21. And if these two angles are equal or congruent, then A is parallel to B. I don't really necessarily have to go further. This is all I need to do, okay? Let's go ahead and take a look at number three. Find Y so that E is parallel to F. So here's E, and then F is right here. So I have these two ordinary lines cut by a transversal. Um, since this is 90 degrees, that means that this has to be 90 degrees as well, okay? Oh, I forgot. I need to go back here, and I need to say uh, they are parallel. A and B, A is parallel to B are, uh, because of the alternate interior angles converse, okay? All right, let's go ahead and take a look at this. So E is parallel to F. And, um, okay, well, this is great. We can go ahead. This is kind of like if this line is perpendicular to these lines, then that means that this is 90, this is 90, and perhaps that this is 90, and this is also 90, okay? 
So that means that, oh, we know that 4y plus 10 is 90 degrees. And is, you know, in mathematics, it just means equal. So all I had to do is just, I'm going to set that equal to 90. Then I get this. I get um, y is equal to 20 degrees. So that means that if I plug this in, that should give me 90 right and we we, we say that um e is parallel to f by the perpendicular transverse uh i think it's called the perpendicular transversal converse okay and that's the answer so uh by the perpendicular transversal converse okay E is parallel to F. All right, number four. If measure angle four is 3x plus 20 and measure angle five is x plus 50, um, so this is equal to 3x plus 20, and then measure angle five is over here, x plus 50. Um, notice that these lines here are ordinary cut by my transversal. Um, these angles here are on the same side of the transversal, and I'm going to assume that this is dealing with the same side interior angles, right? So if you have the same side interior angles, that means that this angle here and this angle here are going to be add up equal to 180. So it's basically saying, okay, measure angle four plus measure angle five is equal to 180. I'm gonna go ahead and start replacing. That's gonna give me three X plus 20 plus measure angle five is X plus 50 equals 180. Then I'm going to combine my like terms. So I should get four X plus 70 is equal to 180. Then I subtract both sides by 70, so I should get 4x is equal to 110. Then you divide both sides by 4, and you're gonna go ahead, you're gonna get a decimal actually. So x is equal to 27.5. So if I plug them in, then they're gonna be equal to each other. Therefore, they're going to be congruent to each other. So if angle four is um Sorry, not congruent, more so like supplementary. Like if I if I plug in uh, 27.5 here and here, they should add up to 180 degrees after you plug them in. So we say that angle 4 and angle 5 are supplementary, okay? And if they are supplementary, that means that M is parallel to N. So we say that by using the same side interior angles converse okay all right two more questions uh, if measure angle two is equal to 3x plus 4 and measure angle 6 is 5x minus 8 so measure angle 2 is 3x plus 4 and measure angle 6 is 5x minus 8 Okay, so find the values of, of x that makes m parallel to n. So, um, 2 and 6, these lines are cut by a transversal. If I compare, if I'm talking about regions here, I have, you know, my first region and the second region, we can see that 2 and 6, they're pretty much on the same location, just by just different regions, right? So that means they're, they're we can assume that they're congruent. So 3x plus 4 is equal to 5x minus 8. Then I get 12 equals, what, 2x? Then 6 is equal to x. So if I plug them in, then they are congruent. Therefore, m is parallel uh, to n by the corresponding angles converse okay number six if measure angle one is 7x plus two so this is 7x plus two and measure angle seven is 3x plus 22 y'all you can see that these angles here they are on the opposite side of the transversal and they are on the outside, they're exterior angles, right? So 
this looks like alternate exterior angles to me so that means we can add or not add i'm sorry we can equal them to each other so 7x plus 2 equals 3x plus 22 minus the 2 on both sides and minus the 3x on both sides you get 4x is equal to 20 so x is equal to 5 okay so x would make m parallel to n m parallel to n by the alternate exterior angles converse okay see you later